Hey guys, so I decided to make this a series and extend this little title screen demo to possibly a full game. So this is part two of making Finest at Freddy's in Godot. Now, um, the last video was more of a tutorial, um, but I figured it would take way too long if I continued like everything just being like a tutorial. So instead, this is going to be more like a showcase of of like the process of making finance at freddy's first thing i'm going to do is create the warning screen all right so here's the warning screen i have a message which you can't see right now because it's attached to an animation where it can fade in and it can fade out and also has a timer which is how long it stays visible which uh, once it's done fading out it switches to the title screen and also, I made it so that you can skip the warning screen if you uh, click the left mouse button, space, or enter. So I have to go to project settings, go to general, and if I go to run, I can change the main scene to the warning screen. So clicking the play button will bring you there instead of the menu. Okay, and it's going to take about three seconds until fading out and bringing you to the menu. And of course, uh, you can just press space to s skip it. So, um, there's that. Now, before we move on, I want to fix the title screen a little bit. So, in the last episode, I um, fixed up the static by adding a shader which removes the black from it. Which, I guess, I guess it's fine, but um, it really doesn't look good around the eyes. So if I take a peek in the actual game, uh, the static seems to have a shader called Add. So um, that's just like a, a blending style, I guess. We can actually do that in Godot if I make a new shader, so remove that one. So this is probably the simplest shader you've seen in your life. Uh, all it is is just uh, one line, and there you go. Now it has like the, the Add blending to it. Now, uh, I also have to go in and change the code to uh, change the modulate alpha of the static instead of setting the shader parameter. And yeah, it looks a lot better now, especially around the eyes. I also found out that if I go in here, if I open up the frame editor, then you can save the frames and it will keep the transparency and not have that black background like the organized textures did. Of course, I extracted it, so let me see, um, can I get a preview? Yeah, these are a lot um, better divided static. Um, apparently, they're called blip flash in the game files, so I'm just going to delete all of these. I can take this divided static object, delete all this junk, and let's see, I can take in menu 1 through 8. There we go, that's a lot better now. And... Uh, I don't need that shader anymore that was removing the black. And now I gotta turn down the transparency. Yeah, that's looking a lot better. Alright, now I'm looking for the newspaper texture. So... Alright, where is it? Alright, here it was in Office Other for some reason. So here's the newspaper's animation. Nine seconds long. So it starts out by uh, turning up the alpha value so that it fades in, but when it fades out, it actually uh, turns more black, so it doesn't show the stuff behind it. Alright, so I added um, a GUI click action, so now you can detect the new game or continue button being clicked, and uh, once you click the new game button, then it's going to pause everything and show the newspaper. So let's give that a try. Oh. Well, I can't close the game now. Alright, it was a pretty easy fix. Uh, you just uh, set the process mode to always for the sounds and the newspaper. And uh, for the global script, I have to add this, which will also set it to always. So now let's see. Let's give that a try. And yeah, there goes the newspaper fading in. And if I wait a while, just just give some time to read it, and then it starts fading out. Alright, so I'm starting to work on the loading screen. Now I'm going to need a font for this. 
So the font is, what is it? Where, where's the font? Okay, so the font is LCD solid. All right, here it is. Um, this person seems to really like this font. Okay, so the whole thing is white, but that's because of the blip flash. Let's see if it's good. All right, I think that's good. Let me just add an empty frame at the end so it goes away. Okay, I added some more things to the button to detect when the newspaper is done playing, and then switch it to the loading screen. Moment of truth. It works. So I added a little fade out animation for the text, and I also added this little clock in the corner. And here's the script for the loading screen. Let's see if it works. All right. Well, it, um, it loads very quickly because there's nothing here yet. So here's the office, but there's just one weird thing about it, which is that these screens seem to be, like, reflecting the walls behind it. Um, I don't think it's like that in the actual game. Yeah, um, so look at this. I don't know what that texture pack had, but okay. Yeah, bro, what is what is happening with this office? Where did the left light go? Okay, I think I finally got the textures imported correctly. So the original game has, like, these invisible rectangles, where once you put your mouse over them, then it will determine how quickly you pan over to the left or right. So I can do something similar in Godot using Area 2Ds. Now, the only problem, though, is that if I were to put my hand my uh, mouse like all the way on the right then it would count this one this one and this one because they're all stacked on top of each other so i'm going to have to add the movement speed once i put my mouse over one and then subtract it once my mouse goes off of it okay so i attached this script to every single uh, little invisible rectangle and uh, i also put this script onto the office so basically it changes a global variable when you enter the mouse or exit it, and it tells how fast to move the office. So let's test that out. All right, looks like I got it backwards. Well, actually, that's not good. Why am I changing the position of the office? I don't know why. It's because I was changing the position of the actual office. Um, I don't know why I did that, because I clearly have a camera right here. Okay, it's still backwards. What, what is happening? All right, I finally got that working. Now I've got to make some boundaries so the camera can't just go past the screen. So the the minimum is going to be zero, and the maximum is uh whoa wait wait um it's going to be like the the width of the screen divided by four. So so it's like uh 320. There we go. That's a nice. Time to add in the wonderful desk fan. Oh wow, it really is three frames. Okay then. Oh boy, how do I position this? Maybe I can just copy it straight from the game. Okay, that didn't work. I think this is the best I can line it up. Wait, what's the frame rate of this thing? Oh, wow, that really bothers me how the right side is slightly misaligned. Now I have a nice little spinny desk fan. And I'm just going to go ahead and one-up Five Nights at Freddy's already. And I'm going to multiply the camera speed by Delta. Because this is Godot, not Click Team. It really bothers me how if you, like, look at this area very closely, you can tell that it's, like, slightly jittering left and right. And there's nothing I can do about that. Well, actually, there is, but it's too much work. Now, I have just got to go ahead and add the nose honk before I begin any game mechanics. Let's listen to it. Oh, yeah, the game is now playable. Now, would you look at this? The door buttons have black all over them. And I have to save each one of these individually. Okay, where do I position this? I wish this thing would stop popping up. About, uh, right here, maybe? Now I gotta put the click detectors over it. Let's see, so when I click the door button, all right, it prints true, that means the door is closed. And I click it again, it prints false. And the same for the light. So the light is easy, I just changed the frame of the office. But 
the door is going to require another sprite. Let's just snatch this from the game files. Well, would you look at this? Seems like Godot was better at ordering the file names than my file manager is. Oh great, I gotta line this up as well. Okay, I just gotta find the horizontal position. Here, maybe I can make it transparent. Maybe that will make it easier. Dude, it's just like right in between there. I can't even set the position there. Unless, can I actually set this to like a decimal value? Oh, I can. You're just not able to drag it there. Alright, that seems aligned up perfectly. Maybe I can fix the fan, too. Yeah, that looks better. Well, um, it doesn't look better right here. Whatever, let's just see the door. Oh yeah, look at that. That's a really slow door. Should it be 30 frames per second? Alright, let's see this in action. So I click the button, and the door closes, and it opens. Yay, I can even, I can even open it like halfway. Now it's time to put in the sounds. Uh, yeah, look. I think the door sound effect is called SFX Bible 12478. Yep. And now the light sound. Okay, that's not the light sound. I think, I think it's this one. Yeah. Now I gotta make sure the sound loops by going to the import settings and set loop mode to forward. There we go. Those are some good sounds, right? Okay, I just gotta add some cooldown so that you can't press the door like that. Oh, well, I can't open it now. Alright, there we go. Okay, I finally gotta make the door buttons work. So, let's see how these frames work. Um, okay, so when the door is on, it's going to add 1 to the frame. And when the light is on, it's going to add 2 to the frame. So when both the door and light are on, it's going to add up to three, and it's going to show both of them. So I'm just going to do it like this, and we'll see if that works. So yeah, you press the light, it glows blue. Press the door, it glows green. And you can press them both at the same time. Now i got to add the right door buttons by cloning this one, and just dragging it over. I actually have to do more work than that. Now i got to steal the right door. I find it weird how the door frame is like slightly bigger once you add the door animation to it. So since the right door button uses the same script, I'm just going to copy everything, paste it, and then change the word left to right. And here's a cool little trick. You can hold alt to select multiple things at once, so it makes it even more convenient for me. Alright, let's test out the button. Dang, the game crashed. Alright, now let's see it. Yeah, there we go. You can close both doors at the same time if you're really scared, and, well, you shouldn't be able to turn on both lights. Yeah, that's a little broken. Okay, I've got to add a new disable light function to handle this. Let's see it. Alright, it works. It disables the other light. Uh-oh, but I'm not able to turn off the light. I think I fixed it. Let's see. Yeah. Okay, looks like the lights are working, doors are working, this office is in good shape to defend against animatronics, right? Well, not really, because I don't have a camera yet, but um, before I end this episode, I gotta add one little touch. A nice man made this shader for me, where it's kind of like the perspective shader from Click Team. Really? This is the only comment? Okay, so let me paste it in here. I don't have to do a thing. Okay, maybe I do. It is kind of funny to play like this. It's kind of like a trippy mode. Okay, let me fix the direction and just make it a little less um, intense. Is this good? Yeah, I think this is good. The only issue is that it, like, it kind of messes with the, the click detectors a little bit. Let me see. So if you look at the, the door buttons a little bit, you can see how like the blue area is where you click it. Now if I click on it, like right on the bottom, it's not going to detect it. And that's because the shader is like warping it a little bit. Yeah, look, like I'm clicking on the light button right now and it's not even working. So I got to make these things bigger. Okay, that, of course, they're all shared. I don't know why Godot does this. You got to click on all these and make sure they're unique. Okay, that just didn't work for some reason. So I'm just going to like extend the 
the de click detectors like below and above it a little bit. Actually, I can just copy and paste these, right? Okay, now the door buttons are more accurate with the shader. I actually don't know if it's this intense though. Okay, the door buttons are a lot lower down than I thought they were. Um, hey, can you go back? Wait, look at look at the right door. And yeah, the right door button seems to be more pushed to the right. So I can just select both of them and just like press the down arrow a few times. And for the right button, I'm just going to like move it to the right a little. Okay, I think that might be a little too far down. Okay, this is just right. And maybe I'll tone down the effect just a little bit. Alright, so that's about it for this episode. And um, if I do make another episode, I'm going to make the camera system and maybe a bit of the UI. But please tell me if you enjoyed, because that will tell me if you want to see more. And goodbye.